Right, I'm going to give you a, a bit more of an introduction to the EASY platform. We call it EASY, Earth Analytics Science Innovation, um, from a CSIRO perspective. So we just heard from Geoscience Australia about how uh, their platform and Open Data Cube works for Geoscience Australia, producing a, a, a wealth of open um, data products for, for Australia, the national context. Uh, CSIRO, uh, as an organisation, have been a bit more focused on on science applications, and um, and then from our point of view, it's a little bit more use the platform a little bit more for um, developing and prototyping new science products. Uh, so for that sense, we want to go from a we want to move from uh, our demonstration and prototype science at, at a paddock scale and be able to scale that up to to a large scale uh, up to the continental scale so uh, we build our and our science connect our technology to um, do more of the science and prototype development work from, from small areas up to large areas back and forward and so forth so like i, I suggested earlier um, same technology slightly different organizational objectives. Uh, that's the main difference you see here. So here's a couple of just uh, simple examples of some of our earth observation work, um, algal bloom warning systems, um, which uh, takes the satellite imagery and can process that uh, with relatively short latency, days or a week or so, um, detect when there might be algal blooms in, in various lakes and uh, a little map browser there to um, pick up an alert when those uh, events might occur. So it's a nice demonstration of um, distilling down a rich source of information, the Earth observation data, and turning it into a, a, a customised report. Um, I think later this week we might hear from a group called Sino Lakes who, who do something quite similar as well and have a more operational system than this one, uh, but similar intent. Um, and on the right hand side, an, an urban monitor application, which is a bit more of that higher resolution over urban areas um, and, and tailored for different environments to, in this case, by the looks of it, identify tree and green areas, urban forests. Another application out of CSIRO. So this is the, the problem that uh, many of us faced uh, in the earth observation sciences uh, a number of years ago. Um, there are a number of many, many different data sources coming in. Um, activities were, we call them siloed, which just means they were happening within groups and teams and organizations, but were not realizing the benefits of, of common processing tasks between those, those groups and teams. Um, so in that sense, you're getting a lot of uh, repeated work across organizations and uh, a lot of or undifferentiated work where um, uh, very similar for, or if there were differences for, for negligible reasons. Um, and, and this is a key reason why uh, Geoscience Australia and CSIRO uh, with other organizations partnered to um, consider the Open Data Cube and how that might, might solve our common problems. Um, similarly, we've got the same sort of challenges uh, growing with scale and reliability. More data are available, more desire from the from the public and users to have uh, access to data and products when they want them, when they need them. Uh, so that includes so that invokes um, technical topics such as how do we how do we scale uh, from the processing capability or and both from both the processing capability and from the, the science aspects uh, to cover larger regions and larger time time extents. But also the technical aspects of reliability and science aspects of reliability as well. But the technical aspects of reliability might be um, uptime of computers and, and machines and failover and resilience in the workflow systems. And a science reliability might be validated algorithms and, and, and confidence in the, the output of the products. 
and largely this uh, this journey. Um, how do we take ideas that are that are happening at the the team level, um, the lab, if you like, uh, and scale them up to being effective national products and, and some of some of Digital Earth Australia's products, which were uh, highlighted just a, a little while shortly ago, uh, were, were a great example of how to take a, a published idea or a, a demonstrated idea and, and scale it up to a, a national solution. So this is what we're trying to deal with. Um, deal with all the data, get more resiliency capability and uh, smooth the pathway from small scale to large scale. So easy, um, like I, I, I talked to you before, um, it allows us to build our bespoke algorithms, leveraging common aspects of, of data preparation and, and, and uh, libraries and, and facilities and services and APIs and so forth and code. Realize that undifferentiated core capability and then have the compute and reliability to allow us to, to scale up um, so that we can go from, from small scale to large scale. The Open Data Cube is, is one part of this. I think I showed a similar slide, um, or might have had a similar slide a little earlier. Um, so I won't go into this one too much, uh, but the Open Data Cube is, is one way to look at Earth observation data. And, and perform analyses on it. Um, there are a couple of other platforms out there you may be familiar with, Google Earth Engine, Microsoft Planetary Computer, to name a couple. Um, the Open Data Cube for, in the context of Geoscience Australia and CSIRO, we, we favour the Open Data Cube because it gives us, as organisations, control over the code base and control over our operational um, uh, capabilities in this, in terms of producing uh, products and, and national products in GA's case. Uh, and that's really quite important. Um, that, that speaks to aspects of um, reliability in the systems um, and some aspects of, of sovereignty around ownership and, and control and access to, to the code bases and systems that, that we build off. This, uh, this would have been a lovely video from Geoscience Australia. I think in somehow between moving slides around and bits and pieces, the, the video isn't going to fire up in this case, but the Open Data Cube, what it's essentially doing here is tiling up um, a, an area of interest. Here we have a picture of Australia and making sure that all the pixels for a certain product uh, aligned through time, so spatially aligned so you can drill through time. So each one of these little squares in this, this uh, picture is a time series stack of, of satellite imagery over that region. That's an important preparation step um, because that lets us then perform more efficient temporal and spatial analytics going forward. Now, in doing this step, we're not necessarily remapping the Earth observation data to our particular projection per se, uh, but we are ensuring that all the satellite overpass data are on a common projection. Um, that's useful and necessary. So depending on which satellite data series we're working with, um, we, we may have to do some some remapping of of the 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 raw scenes onto a, a common grid to move forward um, again it's only we're only thinking of we're not necessarily a common grid for the whole of australia it's a it's a common grid for for that pixel so all pixels align through time so that's some of the the common work the the undifferentiated work that, that we do in in terms of preparing data and feeding it into an open data cube database instance and after that the the analysis becomes a lot more readily um, achievable in terms of how easy is structured um 
it's cloud infrastructure based it's it's built in amazon web services it's managed with kubernetes and, and terraform uh, software for deployment of all the components there are thousands of components within easy and these are all managed programmatically uh, and that's really important uh, that gives us a lot of resilience a lot of reliability um, a lot of upgradability um, and just generally a lot of consistency um, if we were trying to build such a, a system such a complex system just with the console interfaces into amazon web services for example um, through what we call click ops that is clicking around a console user interface console and selecting the components you want to join together that that kind of procedure would be inherently um how should i say uh risky in terms of uh, small errors um introduced into the system so programmatically deploying this infrastructure is really important for for security and uh, reliability of the technology once we have that security and reliability we build the applications on top here are some examples um, of some work done with uh, across CSIRO and, and uh, in a couple of slides time some some external partners as well so this is a project led by Dr Nagur Cherukuru looking at and with myself and and Eric uh, Eric and myself are on both in this in this meeting today and part of the team uh, so this one this slide's looking at uh, water quality off the coast of New South Wales and assessing uh, changes in the water quality over a very long time series time, time extents um, the the full history of the the motor archive for example so a couple of decades so really getting a an insight into um, how offshore water quality is has changed over decades and, and that can be used to infer uh, what kind of um, upstream changes may have been occurring in terms of um, land use and, and sediment load in the rivers and so forth. Another application is national bushfire intelligence capability in South in, in Australia here. So uh, this team are, are working to build uh, more tools, uh, more capability around being able to assess the the risk of, of bushfire in, into various um various environments uh both natural uh natural environments of of the landscape but also the the urban uh, interface environments as well risk is a is a relative measure as well depending on um whether yeah uh, your risk associated with humans or, or the natural environment and so forth so they're working through that so they've been they want to be able to work from small areas and then scale that up to to large areas again so uh, here easy has been a, a platform that has allowed to achieve them to achieve that in a in, in a very fast time Third example, um, basin scale flooding and inundation modeling through the Murray-Darling Basin. So uh, this builds off uh, Digital Earth Australia's water observations from space product and then does additional analyses and assessments to understand what the, the flooding scale is outside of the river systems into various wetlands and uh, important um, ecological areas such as water bird breeding areas um, and through this kind of analysis understanding what the the temporal and spatial characteristics are and how that might um, relate and, and impact all of these uh, are large data processing jobs trying to reduce vast volumes of data down to simple graphs and statistics so you need a, a large amount of compute crunch to to get you to that point 
this is a, just a, I don't have pictures to go with these, but these are these are quotes to go with um, a couple of our external partners um, who have used the Easy platform. Uh, this is uh, Richard Scott from a company called Oz Minerals. Um, it's really exciting to work with with Richard and the team. Um, he had, uh, is is very technically competent and, and contributes to a lot of the Open Data Cube community, and uh, he was very active in, in running large-scale geoscience machine learning projects across um, a number of different areas of interest to, to Richard and the, and the company. I'll just try, try to read this one myself. Um, might skip over this one, but this one looks like uh, someone else who's had a, a really good experience. I'll pick that one up. Oh, a commercial in confidence. Oh, okay, I recognise who this is. So, uh, we 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 do have uh, with our external clients. Um, I've got a slide coming up later for it. A couple of different ways we can engage with external clients. In this case, uh, they undertook an enterprise license, which meant we built the Easy System into their uh, corporate systems. Um, still using Amazon Web Services uh, as they were too. So. We're able to build the technology and, and and meld it in with their with their systems. So uh, they, they were very happy with the with the result in that regard. So this is what it looks like. Um, that was a bit of a background in those previous slides as to what we're doing in CSIRO with with the Easy Platform and and how we apply it. Um, but this is what it looks like in a in a nice graphic map. So we have. The data supply and the individual products and and um, and, and the building of um, uh, the, the preparation of, of the data uh, on on the left hand side. As we collate those individual data products and and find the data suppliers, uh, we we feed them into the analysis ready data um, pipeline. Uh, that might include the open data cube there and, and an amount of cloud processing analytics to prepare the data sets forward. And then we, once the data are prepared and they're in an analysis ready form, that's when the, the real collaboration work can begin. Um, oops, sorry, what is that? That's annoying. Right, sorry, got to flick back. That was the screen jumping me out for some reason. Garming up. There we go. All right, we're back. Uh, so the the bottom right hand corner is where I was up to. Uh, so this is the, this is the exciting place where we do collaboration. Now, an exciting part of this uh, hackathon process is that with CSIRO and and to a, a reasonable extent, Geoscience Australia, but a bit lesser so with, with with Frontier SI, and that's why we have them as a partner. Uh, we've, we're very familiar with doing science-based applications and, and partnerships and collaborations uh, in a partly in a, a public good sense. Uh, but the real opportunity we see for, for growth of this technology and, and adoption of, of this technology out of the originally out of the original research sector. Is, is to properly engage with businesses and startup enterprises, SMEs, if you like, uh, to, to see how some of our research technology can be applied into the, into the commercial sector. Um, Easy is a, is a platform we can do that because with CSIRO, we have a business model that allows us to enter into uh, subscription terms and, and enterprise terms with, with various customers also, and in addition to uh, research collaboration projects. I'll speak to a, those avenues uh, and what that means for us in, in a short time. Uh, so um, what are, uh, the implication of what we're doing here, we have a, a, an easy Southeast Asia deployment so using our 
our easy technology. Uh, this is deployed into Amazon uh, Web Services data center in Singapore. So hopefully uh, uh, reduce sort of latency getting uh, from the ASEAN countries to getting internet connectivity from the ASEAN countries through to Singapore and backwards and forwards to your desktop. Uh, the largely, uh, it's, uh, we'll, sorry, we, we started this project um, middle of last year or thereabouts, and um, one of our early adopters was Hassanuddin University in Indonesia. Uh, I understand we have a talk from, from the Hassanuddin representatives um, this week to, to discuss how some of the work they did and, and their experiences on, on using the platform with us. Uh, the picture in the bottom left is a uh, water observations from space um, product for, for the Lake Tempe uh, region in South Sulawesi in Indonesia. And on the right is a, a representative coverage of Sentinel-2 um, across Southeast Asia as of, uh, I think, a, a month or two ago when I took that screenshot. Um, it's really easy for us to extend the, the coverage of that. So don't feel left out if you're in the Philippines or in Thailand or Malaysia where the coverage doesn't seem as uh, complete at the moment. It's coverage is, is quite ubiquitous for Sentinel-2 and, and Landsat in this regard. So building this capability, building this resource um, for Southeast Asia, and now through this hackathon process, uh, really starting to engage with the, the business SME sector to, to see if we can uh, grow, the, um, grow the user base, but grow the application base as well and, and find applications and um, analysis topics that are, that are most pertinent and most suited to the Southeast Asia region. So what does it look like for this week for us from a technical point of view? Um, we have a, a number of, the, the little table on the right is really just the, is, is a summary of the easy sessions. So right now I'm, I'm talking to the top line, Monday, introduction to easy. Uh, tomorrow, a couple more talk sessions where we dive in a little bit deeper on some of the getting started with easy um and some what's possible in easy some some scaling up um uh demonstrations um and later in the up to, yes tomorrow afternoon some some tips and tricks and, and more detailed walkthrough of a notebook throughout the week we also have uh tech saloon drop-ins um and there's a there's a, there's a booking sheet that's in, available in in the Google Sheets that uh, you can access. Um, and uh, find a slot that might suit you, drop in, and these these are free and open, well, uh, yeah, free and open, but open discussion sessions uh, to talk about what your idea is and how that might be applied. And uh, we've got experts from Geoscience Australia, uh, CSIRO and Frontier all available uh, to talk through your topics. We might be um, providing examples from our experience of, of where some similar work may have been done that we can adopt and adapt for, for your use case. Or we might be talking about some of the, the deeper technical details uh, around what's what's possible in an engineering sense. So that, that's they're, they're a very dynamic part of, of this week's activities. Um, throughout the week, um, we will be working with and updating and demonstrating a set of notebooks. This is, uh, uh, those unfamiliar with notebooks, we'll, we'll see an introduction tomorrow in, in getting started with easy. Uh, but a notebook is a, is a nice, uh, visual and programmatic way to step through, um, developing an application, showing you both, um, descriptions, explanations, the code associated with the next step and the results of, of each step on the way through. So it's a very interactive and visual way to do programming and, and very popular these days. So there's a GitHub repository of the notebooks set up for this hackathon um, and we'll be updating that 
those notebooks through the course of the week and further on. Importantly, forward opportunities for you. So as we, as, as you progress through this hackathon week and, and build and, and test your ideas and develop your ideas, um, it's worth having a view to what happens next. So the first opportunity, number one, is your ideas can progress to a proof of concept um, process. And, and that uh, might be referred to in various ways, but it, it's what the, the pitches, like the, the, the pitch you might do on, on Friday might be, and, and a bit of the, the judging that we'll do to select uh, which of those proofs of concept we'll be able to take forward in the context of this project. But I think as Emma or Roshni noted first, that doesn't have to be the end of the line um, if you're not selected in that, in that process. There are other ways to proceed. Um, middly, there's, uh, there's, there's various opportunities to do more of your work yourself in the sense that I hope you, you learn something from this week and then you can got the confidence to proceed forward with your idea. That's, that's an excellent outcome in itself. Um, a second opportunity might be to sign up as a CSIRO Easy client, uh, like a couple of the, the quotes we heard earlier. And I'll refer to that in the next slide. And a third opportunity um, might be that your activity is maybe possibly more suited to a direct relationship with Amazon Web Services. And in this context, they have a uh, a startup ramp program for SMEs operating in Asia presently. Um, and we can connect you in with that program too. Uh, that would be outside of EASY and outside of uh, CIRO and GA's um, um, purview, if you like, or oversight, if you like. Um, but nevertheless, it may be the one of the better solutions for you and your idea going forward. So uh, we can explore that further during this week as well with you, see if that's the pertinent and suitable. So if uh, one, one of those options was uh, to be a client uh, for easy, uh, there's a couple of different, um, three different ways. You can, you can continue to work with CSIRO beyond this week, um, aside from being selected as a proof of concept um, partner in this project. So one of the ways uh, to be a, a client with Easy is to engage in an enterprise license where we work with you to build the Easy software into your own systems, into your own organization systems. Uh, a second way is through subscriptions, um, where you, you know, pay a, a regular amount to access the service and support and uh, processing costs and so forth are, are passed back to your accounts. And the third is uh, to engage in research and development and consulting pro projects with EASY, where you're, you're partnering more directly or, more, uh, or partnering directly with our scientists. Um, there's opportunities to partner up in that, that banner with uh, other organizations like Youth Science Australian Frontier as well. Um, that, that third option might be a little bit more familiar um, to, to some in terms of engaging with a research organization, um, but the, we, we welcome and, and note interest in the, the enterprise and subscription models as well. And one of my last slides here, um, this is the, some notes around the AWS startup program. Uh, these are screenshots taken from a slide deck that, um, or a PDF that uh, AWS passed to me, uh, which I can share with you. I just couldn't squeeze it all onto one slide. So I took some, some cutouts to try and describe what the program's about. Uh, there's, a, there's a couple of requirements um, to, to join the AWS startup program. Um, one of them is that it's it's largely around serving public sector, public sector clients and customers. 
Uh, so it's it's be worth a conversation with them if you're if you're truly a, a private enterprise and and how that that might fit in with their program. I can't speak to that, of course. Uh, their their program is currently only running in a few of the ASEAN countries. Um, uh, I'll have to check my check my notes to confirm which ones those are, but uh, I believe that while the program is only active in a couple of countries, it is spinning up to more countries as well. So they're very aware of of this hackathon week, and and they're they're open and um, willing to take uh, feedback from from ourselves as participants here. Uh, there's a couple of notes there at the bottom how to get some more information, and I think in this top right hand graphic uh what it's really speaking to is that uh, it's probably that top row startup kits field access to test solutions and proof of concept funding is it, probably the 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 state that we're in at the moment during this um hackathon week uh to give some context uh and the, the proof of concept program that we go through uh, after within this project after the hackathon would be um, looking to ad address the next couple of rows down in that um, in that AWS graphic in the top right um, whereas the AWS folk would have the uh, more detailed programs that um, and, and capabilities to take you through the lower rows as they see fit all right, that's it. Uh, that's my brief introduction to Easy. Uh, look, what I tried to do there was was show you some examples of its of Easy's use, um, some quotes from from some both internal researchers in CSIRO and external uh, companies and and agents uh, about how the technology is working for us. You've heard a lot about the Open Data Cube and, and the community around Earth observation with with GAs. Uh, extensive contributions and Frontiers extensive contributions to date. So this is a really exciting partnership between the three organizations as we move forward. Um, and uh, I've shown you a little bit around what some of the business engagement models might be uh, going forward out of this hackathon week for, for you and your interests. Um, broadly speaking, we're pretty flexible. Uh, well, well, we'll have to address each, each um, initiative on a case-by-case -case basis and, and try and uh, work with you to decide what a, the right pattern might be. Um, but we've, we've got a, a, a wealth of interest and uh, a decent amount of experience in working through this with, with different uh, partners. So uh, we're very excited and very much looking forward to, to working with you this week. Thank you.